Hello, welcome back to RC Time. My name's Mark. Um, if you haven't been on the channel before, you know that we were building an L39, um, which we are waiting to spray uh, due to a compressor fault. Um, after a week without really doing much and being told that the compressor will still be at least another week, um, I have. Um, started getting the next kit out which was an ME262 that you might have seen in an earlier video uh, I said I wasn't going to but I've got to have something to do and I enjoy my building and that's what I want to do so I'm just going to match start on this and um, you know when the compressor come back I'll get this to a stage where it can be moved off the bench and then we will carry on um, with the L39 so I thought, well, at least it's something for you to see. I was going to take you through this this um, build anyway. Um, this is uh, by a different designer. Um, the kit came from a different company. This kit came from Ceric, um, which uh, do hundreds of different kits by uh, lots of different designers. Um, this one's by Philip Knoll, and it's a 50-inch ME262. Um, so yeah it'll be an interesting little build that's um, going to be different much the same quite a bit of plywood um, strutting in here a um, little bit of old type building and new type building all at once so that's, uh, that'll be okay we shall have a go at it and see a um, bit concerned because yeah obviously if you look at these two main struts which are basically your starting point you can see that they actually carry the circles for the pods for the nacelles for the jet motors um, they also have already built into them the dihedral so as you can see if I put that on the bench there's a gap under the centre here I don't know if you can see that but so the dihedral is already in it as well um, but that's going to make it very awkward uh, once you go on to this part of the wing or for you you might see it better if I say this part of the wing okay due to the fact that this is made up more of 1-8 uh, spruce stringers and your spars which means it won't be quite so easy to get a depth level and make certain that there's no warp and no twist and that to it especially if you can't you know hang it onto a flat surface and uh, uh, while it goes but I think we'll we'll get round it we'll we'll follow the plan um, a bit trial and error and uh, hopefully we'll be okay other than that everything sort of looks uh, fairly similar to how we'd build any other kit so um, yeah I don't think it'll be too bad so I'll uh, do a bit of building you guys can watch um, like I say, I've just run out of projects really, I'm getting my Mustang ready for sale. Um, I am Spitfire is basically ready for next time I'm ready to fly it. And uh, I've sort of run out of bits, the Thunderbolt, you've seen the videos on that, that's ready for its maiden fault, flight. So, so I'm going to start doing some of this, so I hope you enjoy it and uh, I hope it goes alright, we shall see. Alright. Okie dokie.
we have it. That didn't take too long, did it? Um, much the same as the RBC kit, click and cl click together nearly. Um, all the dihedral, it's all built into the wing. The instance is built in as well, so as long as you get the bits in flat, especially with the ply, ply bits, um, there's not a lot else you can do. Let's say, um, far cry from a sort of Spitfire wing from a Brian Taylor kit where it's all pinned to the de bench. Uh, so, but that's all there. Look, the instance is all in. You can see it in the wing um, and dihedral. Sorry. So, yeah, it should be good. It looks a little bit trickier doing these end bits. Um, there's no ply struts there. This is all done in. Uh, one eight square spruce, but what it has got is the spruce square spruce comes all the way through. So as long as the square spruce is dead straight, don't get a bit that's got any warp or bend in it. You can't go far wrong. But I'll probably try and build that upside down. But um, I think what I'll probably do next is actually start on the nacelles. Uh, do the nacelles. And then we'll finish the end of the wings. So I'll just I'll see how it go anyway. I'll I'll work it out. Don't worry. Um, so yeah, but yeah, now it's, it's all getting there. So yeah, and uh, we'll just use the same method as last time. I think I'll probably sheet top of the wing first and use that to make up the uh, ailerons. Make up uh, how they're going to go. Sheet the top of the wing first like we did last time and then turn it upside down and then I'll go through all the joints with a little bit of PVA wood glue um, just to give it a little bit more strength than just relying on the uh, super glue but yeah in general that looks yeah looks very straight yeah yeah so we'll see how it go alright thank you for watching and uh, I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.